All right, so it is lunchtime again, and I have a new meal, something that I've talked about in other videos that I have yet to make for you, and that is a pemmican herbswurst hybrid. If you're interested, keep watching. So this will be the third in a series of videos on the making and preparation of herbswurst. And if you haven't seen the other videos, I'd invite you to go back and take a look at them. The first video is on the making of herbswurst. Herbswurst is an old German military iron ration, which in fact interprets itself as pea sausage. And the idea behind it was, is that it was a military ration that could go in a soldier's backpack and be available to them at any time they were cut off from a supply line and a mess tent. Basically, it was made from pea flour and pork bellies and maybe a few other ingredients thrown in. It is started in around 1900 and was available to soldiers through the First and the Second World War, but it is no longer made today. And it took me some time to track down what I believe was the original recipe for it and uh, then I started experimenting with it and I came with some, up with something that was I think because since there is no good examples to be had today I think very close to the original but something that was easily made at home with readily available material so I invite you to go back and see the making of herbs worse and then the second video of course was getting out and actually cooking it. Basically, you're making a pea soup, and that's what I did. Made It's very, very simple, and it makes a great pea soup. Well, at the end of that second video, I wondered what would it be like if I took some of my herbs worst and mixed it with some of my pemmican and make a hybrid between the two. Well, that's what I've done. I took literally a block of each, melted them together in a pan, put it back into my muffin tin and let it harden up. And now I have it here in this vacuum seal. So what I have is a four ounce block or 112 grams of that hybrid half and half herbs worse and pemmican. And uh, I did make a sample up for myself already. I tried a batch of this at home to see how it would turn out. I, I like it, but I'll talk more about what it tastes like and everything when we get to actually making it. So why even bother doing this? Well, it is a something that will keep in your backpack for a long time and provide a very condensed form of nutrition that is going to be hard to beat by anything else. It is very, very calorie dense because of course the ingredients are, well, in the pemmican, it is tallow and ground dried and powdered meat mixed in about a 50-50 ratio by weight. And most people know now the history of pemmican, it can last seemingly forever. That's what, you know, people will say they've been finding this in caves. They believe it to be upwards of a thousand years old. I don't think I'd want to eat it, but easily there's reports of 50 year old blocks of pemmican still being edible because tallow, which is organ fat from a beef or could be moose or could be deer, uh, is, a, is a very long lasting, safe and room stable, at room temperature stable fat. It, you know, basic, well, they make, they make candles out of it. Let's put it that way. So that's one, that it's the pemmican. Now on the herbs worst side, it's made, at least I made it from lard, which is rendered pork fat. So pure lard and now you, the original recipe called for pea flour, but in the video that I made, I made my own flour up because pea flour was not that readily available. So I went to one of our bulk food stores known as Bulk Barn and I found a soup mixture was with lentils and barley and split peas and I ground that into a flour, basically, well close to a flour, it was pretty a little granular at the end when I ground it, but made that into a powdered mix. And then I also mixed in pea protein just to amp the protein, an unnecessary addition but it certainly adds to the protein level on top of the fat. When you mix those two up and you make herbs worse, the lard will harden up more than it is in its natural state because it's holding together all the dry ingredients, but it's not as hard as tallow or pemmican is. You can still kind of mush it around in your hand, especially if it gets warm like it is here today in the low 30 degree Celsius. So when I combined the two of them, I got the best of both worlds. Something that's not as hard as pemmican, but not as soft as the herbs worst is. And I, I can show you that. I think I can show you that. I can push it in quite hard and I did get a little divot on that, but you know, 
in order to really deform that, I think I'd really have to push on it. And that's been in my backpack now for, well, I've had it in there for, I think, two weeks, uh, just waiting for an opportunity to cook it. And you can see it's kept its shape. So the temperatures, at least 30 degrees Celsius, have not made it uh, kind of go blobby in, in its package. All right, that's the history and the short backstory on the making of this hybrid pemmican herbswurst. But uh, let's cook it up and try it. All right, the first step in preparing my hybrid uh, pemmican herbswurst uh, thing is to cut it up and just kind of break it down into smaller bits just to make it a little bit more easily dissolve in boiling water. Now, the cook kit I'm going to be using today is my Austrian military cook kit and before anybody says Mark that's dangerous because it's made of aluminum I understand what you, where you're coming from on that I just made a video review of this mess kit where I actually talked about the legitimate research behind the safety or any health concerns about cooking in aluminum so if you're interested watch that besides if you don't want to cook in the aluminum you don't have to I just thought it was appropriate for a military meal that was based on on a German uh, field ration that I would cook it in a military cook kit. So that's what I'm going to be using today to uh, prepare my meal in. Now we'll just kind of open this up. I'll take the block out. Now this is the little kidney bowl that would normally be inside of the, the military cook kit. While the water is coming to a boil, I'm going to be just be putting it in there to kind of put it, hold it in one place. Now, I'm just going to hold this up so you can see what we've got going on there. So you can see, oh, well, you can see the little flecks, the darkest flecks would be the beef. And then the lighter flecks, the different colors, of course, would be the lentils and the peas and the uh, barley and uh, different things in there. And of course, all the medium brown colors would be all the two fats that are mixed together. So you know what? You can eat this just as it is. Okay, I can't tell you it's the tastiest thing in the world, but it's not bad either. If you didn't have a means of heating your water up, you could eat this straight as is. Although I think I'd recommend having water to drink afterwards. Okay, that should do it. Let me put that in my little dish here. Put that aside. All right, that's it. Now, I have mentioned in the making of both the pemmican video and the herb swish video, that I did not add any spices of any kind to it. Reason being for me primarily is so that I can tailor it to whatever I'm going to be using it to cook with it that day. And what I mean by that is quite often rations like this would be supplemented with found food or foraged food or purchased food or you know something that they may have. They may share among themselves that somebody had a can of a spam. That would be a great addition to something like this as well. But the idea is that you can mix things in it and that's the point at which I want to start adding any spices to it. So there are no spices in it. It does have a flavor. Actually the flavor is quite quite good, quite palatable. But as I cook it, I will be adding my own flavorings, herbs, and spices to it. All right, next uh, step is to get some water onto a boil. All right, I think my water, yeah, come to a rolling boil. Let me turn this back down to a simmer. There you go, that's pretty low. I can still hear the flame, but... Uh, not much. I may have to put a windscreen around it. By the way, if you're interested, this is my Fire Maple Trident Butane Gas Canister Stove. Decided to bring that out today just to be a little different. Plus, I've got a whack of those butane gas canisters at home. So I'm going to be putting in my pemmican mixture, pemmican Herbsworth mixture. And this will take a couple of minutes. Now, I have... I've got two cups of water in this and I'm not convinced that wasn't too much. It may have been a little bit more than I probably put in here. But uh, you do want to give this a couple of minutes to simmer to rehydrate the beef because that was powder dry when I made the pemmican. And of course all the soup mix, the barley and the lentils and everything, that was powder dry and ground. And uh, so it does take a minute. Now, 
I'll mention this now and as mentioned in the other video, if you are going to be cooking in aluminum pots and pans, it's best not to use a steel or a titanium spoon or fork or anything else. It's best to use either something made of wood like this or something made of plastic just so that you don't scrape aluminum off and have it get into your food. The risk is very low, but it's not non-existent. So it, just to be safe, it's better to do that. Oh yeah, this is starting to thicken up. All right, I'm going to let this go for a minute or two, and then I'll transfer some, some of it into the top half of my cook kit, and we'll do a taste test. All right, I think we're ready to give this a try. My Herbswurst Pemmican Hybrid Soup Mixture. Now, in hindsight, I think I probably put a bit too much water in the pot for this. I estimated about two cups. I think I should have went with a cup and a half. Uh, I did that with my experimental one and it worked out much better. Don't ask me why I didn't repeat it here. A little bit too much water. Uh, I could have let it simmer for a while longer to see if it would get any more thickened up but honestly I felt I was just wasting the butane fuel and I didn't uh, didn't want to do that so I decided to turn it off I let it set for a couple minutes to see this is getting a little hard to hold on to I let it set for a couple minutes to see if it would thicken up on its own so I mean don't get me wrong it's still good consistency and it still looks like a nice thick soup it's just not as quite as thick as I would have liked to have had it so let's give it a go you can see I've got it in my mess kit top half mmm that's not bad yeah I think I would have preferred it just a little bit thicker than this But the flavor is there. The flavor and the texture is there. Now, uh, off camera, I did add my herbs, garlic, salt, and just some loose herbs uh, into it. And I let them kind of mix those through as well. So again, I, one of the reasons I didn't focus on that is because you put in what you like in your meals and, to, and do them to taste. And uh, yeah, this was just what I decided to put in. I can actually see some of it floating around the um, herbs that I put in are floating around in there. Uh, one more taste of it. So there is bits in there that have texture. Not hard, not rock hard or anything else. A little chewy. Kind of like bacon bits. In fact, that's probably what they are because in my original Herbswurst, rather than use pork bellies, I used... Uh, the lard and bacon, cooked crumbled bacon, bacon bits in that to give it the texture and the flavor. And so that has carried over into this mixture. But when it comes to the beef, I don't see it. The beef that was in the pemmican, I, d I just don't see it. it. It's dissolved into the meal nicely. Tastes good. Yeah, this, this is a winner, right? Okay. There was nothing wrong with the pemmican by itself. There was nothing wrong with the herbs worse by itself. But I think I've hit the right combination in the best of both worlds by putting them together in a 50-50 mixture. I don't have a name for this yet. I mean, I tried Pemwurst, Herbican. That doesn't sound very good. So <laughs> I guess maybe what I'll do is I'll throw it at you. Give this a name for me, will you? My Herbswurst Pemmican Hybrid. Give it a name and uh, I'll give you credit for it in a future video with the, for the one I decide that I think fits it both. They're the best. Okay, there's no specific recipe that's going to appear in the video description because it's in the other two videos, the Pemmican video and the Herbswurst video. But what I'll do is I'll put links to both of those videos in the video description and at the end of this video so you can go back and get a little bit more information. But all there is to say now is get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.